Comic book fans everywhere, you are now listening to the official Crossover Comics Podcast with your hosts at JJ's Comic Stuff and at Longbox Entertainment. What is going on, everybody? You are listening to the official Crossover Comics Podcast. My name is Jeremy. I'm here with my co-host, as always, Michael, a.k.a. Longbox Entertainment. And we've got a guest today to talk about a very specific series in DC right now, and that guest is Hillbilly Comics. What's going on, man? Nothing much, man. Happy to be here. Excited to talk about this series. Uh, this kind of came out of nowhere for me. I was not expecting to read this as soon as I, I did and was not expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. So That that was my going to be my very first question. What brought on this random idea to read this series? Because I've seen these books in stores. I've heard about these books, but the covers never appealed to me. Like It never made me want to pick up a copy. I guess it was uh, kind of my idea, right? Like, yeah. I, so, funny thing, I I recently just bought these books, man. Like literally a couple of days ago, and I sent a message in the Discord. I was like, "Hey, have any of y'all ever read Fables? Like, I just found these volumes. I've never read it before. Like, what what's the deal with it?" And Hillbilly. He had a message. He said that, oh, I found, like, volumes one through three at my Ollie's. And I was like, oh, cool. So, like, me and Hillbilly, we, like, private message each other. We, You know, we set up a little drug deal. We was like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you get me volume three, and I get you, you know, volumes, what was it, like, five, four, and five. Four and five something like so that. So, I think it was, like, I thought I would have been, been able to find volume three. I haven't been able to. I'm going to check another Ollie's tomorrow. But I found Volume 7, and then you found Volumes 4 and 6. Yes. And so, yeah, it's pretty much we got it to where each, we're trying to get it to where each of us has Volumes 1 through 7 minus Volume 5. Yeah, Which, yeah. That one's yeah. like, you can get that You can get that one, like, Amazon and Stock Trades. Like, it's not difficult to find, but still, yeah. like... Yeah, Ollie's Bargain Outlet on the East Coast. You find a bunch of these volumes for like two ninety nine, three ninety nine a piece, like as much as a new comic issue. That that's not bad considering how hard they are to find. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was crazy. So I was just like and then randomly, like everything just started like all the puzzle pieces started coming together. Cause then JJ, you messaged me and you was like, Hey, any ideas for this uh, this weekend's podcast? And I was like, bro, I don't know, but I really want Hillbilly on the show. <laughs> <laughs> that was really like, was want... the conversation, too. Like, we have no ideas, but we know who we want on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, either, it, was, it was either you or Loco. I was like, I want either one of them on the show. I don't, I don't know what. I suggested the idea for both, but then he said that might be a little too chaotic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, that's going to be a yeah. whole... We'd be talking for like three hours, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying the software doesn't allow that long, so... <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I just said, I mean, I was like, well, I know Hillbilly has fables. I have fables. Let me see if JJ has fables. <laughs> <laughs> and I did not. I didn't have any except a couple random issues that are like issues 14 and like 80 something or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and so I had to get on. I was looking at the DC uh, Unlimited or Infinite app or whatever it's called now. And it, it's finally doing a seven day free trial of it. So I was like, bet that's perfect timing. So I just went on there and got that. And I just got done reading issue five. Like, I don't know half hour 45 minutes before this podcast dog i'm gonna be honest i finished the last page while you were doing the intro <laughs> <laughs> dang i was the only one punctual i finished this book like i don't know like hey i told you ahead ago, of time i would i was gonna have to you know get a hold of them because i didn't have access at the time so it's true, it's true. i had a reason <laughs> hey when you said that you will figure it out. I was like, JJ's got it. He said he would figure it out. <laughs> I said I'd figure it out, and I always figure it out. If I say I'm going to figure it out, I'm going to figure it out. And if I can't figure it out, I'm going to find someone else who can. <laughs> facts. Facts. But yeah, guys, fables. 
by Vertigo. What a twist on fairy tales, man. Yes. Crazy. Dude. Dude. I'm learning every day that Vertigo is not an imprint to sleep on. Not at all. I got introduced to Vertigo as early as 2022. And it is not something you want to sleep on. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, Honestly, this year has been like my first year really diving into Vertigo comics because before that I've only read like a couple of like Constantine stories and like Preacher and that was it so this year Preacher was I've good read... though Preacher is Sidebar. good yeah. <laughs> Preacher is good I think I read but, uh, one volume of Why the Last Man and that was and that's been about it uh, I until this read year that and reading Fables and Sandman this year has been like Life changing, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so, fables for our uh, watchers and our listeners. It is written by Bill uh, Willingham. Willingham. Yeah, and artwork by <coughs> Lane uh, Medina. And I want to say, like, the artwork in here is really, really nice. It's like that classic. It's very crisp. Yeah, very yeah. Vertigo esque. Because I noticed that Vertigo artwork looks very similar. Like, they get certain artists to do Vertigo. Like, when you go into, like, a drawing class in high school, that's the style of comic book art that they show you and try to teach you. Yeah. Because it uses a lot of, like, the three-point perspective stuff. It uses a lot of, like, very tiny lines and straight edges to make your... make everything look three-dimensional. Yeah, and it's it's that era too of like the late eighties into the early nineties where they're still using that like classic style of penciling. But well, actually it came out around, in uh two thousand two. Really? Yeah, Fable wow. the first well, okay, issue came out in two thousand two. Yeah. It has that style where it's like that transition period mm-hmm. to where it's a very classic pencil field, but the layouts and the way they were playing like playing around with different kinds of layouts and borders and paneling. That's honestly, I super experimental until right now. I didn't even know it was from 2002. I thought it was from the nineties because of the, the artwork and everything. So that blows my mind. I say, I've got the app open in front of me. So I've got, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Wombach said, it's very much that vertigo style that mm-hmm. they became known for. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. It's very and they dark. were doing this kind of stuff. It was very crisp artwork. It was darker styled, but like, uh, what's the word? It's almost it gives me like a gothic feel to everything in the books. Yes, yeah, and not like gothic, like dark and you know, black hair and lipstick and all that good stuff. I'm talking like actual like European gothic architecture types vibes. <laughs> yeah. But it's like pretty too. Like even with mm-hmm. the like the covers, um, the covers are really nice. They're like painted, almost. Yeah, they almost uh, look like oil paintings. Like the funny thing that me and JJ were talking about before we hopped on was the fact that the covers they don't look as enticing. Like if I were to see these at a comic book store, I wouldn't necessarily pick them up. No, yeah. You know, there's nothing yeah, on no, there. If you're really... a reader who picks up new things based on how the cover looks, this doesn't look like anything. No. You, you know, I mean, you look at it and it's like, okay, somebody did some kind of fantasy book, it looks like. Yeah. yeah. That's it. <laughs> that's it. I, I would be like, oh, this doesn't interest me. Why would I pick that up? Like, you know. But then you get into it, it's like a really good detective story. <laughs> it is is it's almost to the point where one of the one of the characters who is a uh, big b wolf who is basically I'll say, we'll go ahead character. and just give everybody spoiler warnings we're not going <laughs> to yeah, sit yeah, here and try yeah. to from a series that had its 20th if anniversary we tr- if we don't year, spoil actually. anything we yeah. won't have a podcast today okay guys like <laughs> yeah there will be major major spoilers for the first five <laughs> issues of fables <laughs> so yeah uh so yeah like uh bigby he's the big bad wolf basically uh and he's like their sheriff of the town which is fable town because the whole the whole thing about fables these mystical 
fairy tale characters. There was like a war or something that happened in the old lands. They don't really like go into they, like they go more into it. it in like issue four and five. They definitely explain yeah. it a little bit better. It's bas- basically what happened is like the fairy tale stories. All of those had their own little kingdoms and worlds where they used actually existed in the in this story and somebody they're calling the adversary came in and conquered everything and all these characters had to escape into what they call the mundane world which is our world and yes. they're like they are they've all taken regular human forms if they weren't already human characters so like the big yes. bad wolf just looks like a scruffy detective yeah 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 I love it. And, and, and speaking of like the whole mundane world, I love how they call regular people uh, Mondays. Mondays, yeah. It, 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 make, so it reminds me of Muggles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's so good. And basically, like in this story, you get like all your classic, you know, fairy tale characters. You know, we got Snow White in here. Just don't mention the seven dwarfs. Uh, she doesn't yeah, like that. Yeah, apparently that's a touchy subject. I, they didn't really explain that. They didn't, Which is something but... I'm super excited to read forward and find out about, by the way, because, like... I want to know what happened with those seven dwarves, man. Bro. That was in, like, same, the first few I'm pages, like, wasn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. when she's when she's talking to uh, Beauty and the Beast. Right after she was introduced. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, because it was uh, Beauty that, or Belle, had mentioned it to her. Which is another thing. Yeah, but they thing. weren't calling her Belle, though. They were actually calling her Beauty in the entire yeah. book, which was interesting. Yeah. I think they were treating that as, like, her last name, which I thought was interesting. Yes. So what, Belle Beauty? Like, yeah, I guess. And, like, Beast's last, like, they're calling name him Name is Mr. just Beast? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, call, they're calling him Mr. Beast, so I guess if Bill Willingham ever decided to file a copyright strike... Or something. Like, oh, <laughs> I wonder how that would big. work. <laughs> right, right, right. I don't know because the characters are public domain, but I mean, it's his, it's his book and like his nickname. Maybe I don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, true that. But I don't know. Honestly, that was the funniest thing ever. I I was reading that and that scene with Beauty and the Beast, and I was talking to my wife, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, this comic." It's so crazy because I, I was I was telling my wife I was like I was like babe hey you know how in Beauty of the Beast you know the curse of the beast and how you have to have one true love love to get rid of the curse and all that stuff right and I told her how in this comic they're having marital issues. So because of that, their love is a little on the rocks. So now, his right? So whenever she's back. upset with him, he he yes. starts it's reverting like back to the beast. <laughs> yes. And his teeth. Oh, fun fact: his teeth apparently grow faster than his mouth does <laughs> when that happens. So he can't even talk right. I was cracking up through that whole part, oh. dude. <laughs> It was so funny, man. He was like, "My teeth. I I can't do it with my teeth." And the way they lettered it was. Perfect. Like I could hear it in my head, you know. <laughs> yes. And yes. that's what was even better about that was while all this is going on, like Snow White's just sitting there, like this is normal, and basically just tells them like, well, right, just sitting there, like, oh like, my y'all God. got yourself into this, <laughs> bro. I love Snow White's energy. She was literally like, uh, y'all need to figure this out. Because <laughs> if yeah. not, your ass is going to the farm. <laughs> she reminds me of the. Um, the uh, DA from uh, NYPD Blue. Ah, uh, okay. I'm okay. not familiar, but I've, I've, I've does, seen that. It, it's a, it's a cop DA show, vibes. but yeah. It's a cop show, yeah. <laughs> Very like That's, yeah, straight if, if, to it ain't, point. if it ain't psych, I don't watch it, so. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a great show, too. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. I, honestly, Snow White, I really like what they did with Snow White. She is just one of those, like, strong female characters. Um, they did that with a lot of the female characters in this series, yeah. I noticed. Like, Cinderella yeah. is, is sitting there fencing with Bluebeard. Yeah. Yes. And, like, like, winning. <laughs> yes. I was like, they made Cinderella a badass. Yeah. 
and that's that's something that was super cool about this too. Because when you hear, like, I gar- I guarantee you, half the watchers, half the listeners, as soon as they heard Lombok say "strong female character," I guarantee you, someone probably rolled their eyes. They probably because did. in a lot of ways that that trope or that it is very stereotypical in media, especially when written by a man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so Bill Willingham and doing that and like, like actually making them strong women without making without taking away like all of their femininity and everything like that, which is a common drawback of the trope, was genius. Just yeah. want, and just well, yeah. and also like you know Absolutely a lot of genius. especially like fairy tale characters, you know, their their husband will cheat on them or something, and they'll forgive them by the end of the story and they're back and they're happily ever after you know no snow white caught yeah. prince charming with her, her sister and said nope you're done yes like immediately <laughs> oh, which we find oh. we find out more about him too and he's an he's an interesting cat he's but a douche he is he's a super charming. mega douche oh man he is the worst kind of guy bro like he is the kind of guy I actively avoid being friends with. <laughs> so, you know, in his introduction scene, I was like, "Wait, why is this conversation?" Because you know, with the waitress, I was like, "Why is this conversation going the way?" I was like, "Is this his power? Like, is this his like enchantment?" <laughs> is like. But then you know you he, they say oh Prince Charming it's like oh that's his whole oh, thing man. is he can charm them all he can charm that, but he's just not that guy. he's that guy that like in the real world he's that guy that always has a girlfriend and he like bums off their couch that's Prince Charming ain't shit don't got a job none of that. Gets his girls to buy him all the nice clothes and the all trips the nice and the cars yes. and the food and the wine and the <laughs> yes yeah and that that's it. we we see that so early on because the waitress that he's talking to he's like yeah you'll get this right like I didn't bring any money to pay for this food like you you're gonna pay for this right like I, I I'm I'm planning on dipping out like you you can come with right. me right she's want, like well it was gonna it. be me paying for it anyway so. Yes. I'm like, how does that work? <laughs> Only somebody with the name Prince Charming can make that work. Dude, dude, literally, he's like, I'm not paying for this food. You're gonna have, you're gonna take care of this. And then the fact she was just agreeing with it, she was like, yeah. <laughs> Took him home, and then he dipped before morning even happened. Oh, bro, that was so funny. He went, you know, they had a little shag session and was gone that was a funny scene too Bro, you could you could see like the way they drew that you could see the people in the next room with their ears pressed up against the wall <laughs> right yes, <laughs> yes. Like, wait a you like <laughs> oh my gosh it's just so funny man that was such a funny scene it's, there's so many like little like blink and you miss it moments in this Mm-hmm. They're just yes. absolutely hilarious. Oh man, I love. Like, did I anybody love... notice that it was Little Boy Blue helping spread the blood all over the re uh, re uh, recreated ca- crime scene? <laughs> oh yes, yeah. it was Little yeah, Boy oh. Blue and uh, Flycatcher. Randomly, I, I like some of the characters they pulled out are like I had to look up some of these characters because I, I could I didn't up. remember. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I did. I still didn't get to look it up. I still have no idea who Flycatcher is. They yeah. they explained it a little bit, I guess, but I I had never heard that one growing up. Yeah, I don't. I, mean, I I still haven't heard that one either. Like I looked it up, and I'm like, I don't recognize this at all. <laughs> I guess Disney decided. He, I guess yeah. Disney decided that was too far for some somehow. Yeah, right, right. You know, it's crazy. It's like, so just so that way our listeners are tracking, because we did mention Little Boy Blue and the whole crime scene. So the way the story starts off, again, spoilers, because I know some of y'all don't be forgetting. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Um, we get Jack 
from Jack and the Beanstalk, classic story. He like runs into Bigsby's big Bigby's office, right? And he's like, "Some terrible's happened. Like you need to come with me." Blah blah blah. blah. And he goes with him. Has Snow White because Snow White is the deputy mayor, something like that. Like she's not uh, operational like, yeah. supervisor. Yeah, some. some she's like basically that, right? head of the fairy tale government. Yes. Yeah. She, Under she the king, she she runs it, but she's not the figurehead. Yeah, because King Cole, he's like the top dog, and she's like under him. So they they go and find out it's uh, Rose Red's uh, apartment, who is Snow White's sister. Which I didn't even know. I had to look up that whole thing. I would say, is that a thing? I don't. I don't remember that from the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs story. It actually is a thing. It's just it's a separate story. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. I had to yeah. I had to do some research on that too because I thought Rose Red and Big B Wolf, I thought, you know, it's like you got three pigs. Red Riding Hood, yeah, that like would Red make Riding sense. Hood, yeah. Right, right. That's what I was thinking too at first. And Which I, was I like, hope they bring her in eventually, but that wasn't it. We did get a little tease. Of Red we we got a, a one panel of Red Riding Hood, but it was during a flashback was back to the old lands in before the so i'm wondering if little red riding hood is one of the one characters that just didn't make it didn't make it out yeah i mean because you notice we've only seen one of the three little pigs after the flashbacks that's true because he was sitting there arguing with bigby that is true that was a funny scene oh my gosh i I hope people watching, we're going to be like all over the place, like talking about this story. Yeah, no, there's no way to structure this conversation in any kind of chronological (laughs) order just because it's so chaotic. (laughs) No, yeah, because it's like we're being introduced to characters for the first time, but it's characters that we've known for our entire lives. Or at least known of. Yeah, exactly. So it's like... like our, our exposure with this with these characters is kind of in like a circular timeline, so that's just how the conversation's going to go. <laughs> well, and I think it's True. weird because like I feel like as the generations go, less and less people are exposed to these like nursery rhymes and fairy tale stories, right. unless they're in movie form. Yeah. True. Whereas when I was real little, my grandpa still had like the old fairy tale books, you know, so he would read us those, yeah. and those are way darker. Yeah, I like to think. Like, I like to think that the like most of the Disney in stories the in the actual version. fairy tale books, they don't have happy endings. <laughs> oh, I I refuse to like. I know how it goes, but I refuse to actually read the Little Mermaid. Oh my oh, god! Yeah, I refuse yeah. We won't to get that. into that. That's a whole other thing. If y'all want to see a stark contrast, go watch The Little Mermaid and then go read The Little Mermaid. <laughs> Two totally right. different stories. But yeah, so so in the story, right? Catch our, our listeners up. So, big murder. Who killed Rose Red? That's the whole big thing. And our boy, Big B, is on the case. He's their sheriff, so he's going to solve this. And I just want to say this. After reading this story, Big B. Wolf is a better detective than Batman. Because, bro, (laughs) it took him not even five issues to solve this whole... He already had it all pieced together. It took him an hour. He solved it in issue one. We just didn't know it yet. There was like one one missing piece that it took him four issues to figure out. And the way everything went together when he explained everything at the end, I was like, yeah, you're right. You're right. Actually, no, yeah, it was three issues because he had everything figured out by issue four. Issue five was the explanation. The yeah. entire yeah, thing issue was five was literally the entire last issue of the first story arc of these of fables is Big Bad Wolf just going over how he figured everything out and what happened. Yeah. And it is what some of the most skilled detective work I've ever read in a comic book. Like, wow. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. And he didn't have no flashy tech, no scanners, no analyzers, no nothing. Bro, it Smell. take Batman... Most of that he Batman solved with his nose. Issues yeah. Just to do what Bigby did. <laughs> 
Like, bro. Batman writers take note. Take note, bro. Bro, imagine imagine Big B with prep time. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> bro. <laughs> I swear we bring up prep time in every issue of Crossover Comics. We do. <laughs> like, it, somebody brings it up every time we do a podcast. Yes. I think I think we should make a video where it's just, it's like snippets of everyone <laughs> mentioning prep time. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Baby's that guy. The freaking pig. I love the conversation with him and... One of the three little pigs. But yeah, so basically, Big Bad Wolf goes through. He figures out that... uh, Not Little Red Riding Hood. uh, Rose Red is basically... Has faked her own death. Yeah. In order for her boyfriend, Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk... (laughs) So random... (laughs) Who apparently is a freaking menace to society because nobody likes him. <laughs> hold up, hold up. The yes. reason, I'm jumping way ahead. The funniest thing to me about this was she had to fake her own death because he lost money in a dot com investment. Bro, <laughs> yes. I'm like, this man ain't got his finances right, bro. <laughs> oh. This this man is out here, Rose Red. <laughs> Only Bill Willingham could write Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk to have basically a crippling gambling addiction, and me be like, yeah, that tracks. <laughs> <laughs> like, didn't seem out of character at all for some reason. At all. It, it really didn't, because in the original story, remember he sold the cow for those stupid beans. That's it makes sense, which bro. apparently he has scammed <laughs> numerous people over the centuries with fake maps to his magic beans that are still gone. Bro. You know, yeah. Big B even said, he, "You lost those centuries ago. Why do you still? <laughs> Why are you still? Yeah. Oh man, Jack is crazy. And the fact that Jack has a spinoff comic with just him." I was like, I need to read that because I know yeah. it's gonna be wild. Oh, oh it's man. gotta be. Considering all the things that they were describing that Jack has gotten away with over the years, like, <laughs> bro. And speaking of gotten menace. away with, apparently there was this event in the story which they haven't really gone over a lot yet, as far as the first five issues. But they go over this thing called the Great Amnesty or the Grand Amnesty or something. Uh, oh, where yeah, basically, basically all the fairy tale yeah. characters were forgiven for all their crimes committed in fairy tale land. Yeah. So like yeah, the big like bad the, wolf uh, here diplomatic was... immunity of sense. What is it? I said it's kind of like a diplomatic immunity in a sense. Like everything Yeah, in a sense since they're all political refugees technically time. like Yeah. 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 That's why, it's like uh, they gave themselves immunity, which is kind of weird because it's like there's no one there to hold you guys accountable except yourselves. But you got to give yourself immunity, like. But I guess if yeah. you think about it, like the Bed Bag Wolf was in numerous different stories and did horrible things to ho- all kinds of people. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you look at Bluebeard, he butchered all of his wives in every every time they had a wedding night. Bro, you know I that mean, was wild. I was like, I was like, blue, like, Bluebeard is a menace too, man. Oh, everybody is. Everybody is. That's the thing. Even even Snow White, she wasn't a menace before she got there, but by God, she became one. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, she gets stuff oh, done the, now. At the at the end of it, when they were figuring out the punishments and everything, she was like, "Yeah, I think I have a way to make everybody equally miserable." <laughs> yes, that was and great. They, oh, they were like, oh, "How does this God, help me?" She said, "You get yes. to keep your freedom and your head," which means they do have capital punishment in Fable Town. <laughs> yes. Which I'm sure is not the last time we're going to hear about it, dude. The fact that uh, I love that ending scene with uh, when she was talking to uh, Prince Charming. Hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. yep. That was a great scene. Like, she literally, like, I was like, yes, though, why? You, 
get him, girl. <laughs> right, like there was no even temptation to go back to his ass. Yeah. Oh, oh none whatsoever. She just said, "All right, yep, okay, now we're all done here. I don't need you anymore. Go by, like, yeah, like go ah, away." Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Find somebody else's sister to hook up with. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, he could have stayed yeah. with the waitress. <laughs> the waitress was down for the cause. I don't know. Right. <laughs> she was about it, about it, man. Like, dude. But oh I don't blame Rose. I would have I would have left, too. I would have tried to fake my death because Bluebeard was definitely going to kill her. Oh, oh yeah. Bluebeard. He wasn't even going. He wasn't even going to consider it. He wasn't even going to consider it. Honestly, though. If I'm Rose, I wouldn't be with Jack after that either. Bro. Because he done proved he's dumb. Like Dumb as hell. And dumb that's the thing. Hell. The one time he got lucky, too. So towards the end. I know, guys, again, we're talking in circles. But towards the end, he, like, Prince Charming meets with Snow White to have this whole thing where it's like, hey, I want to sell my title and all my assets back in Fairytale Land so I can be rich here. And that some sucker will pay on the off chance that we get to go back. Yeah, like, I really hope they get more into yeah. how they all got there uh, rather than just saying we all got exiled. Like, there's got to yeah. be way more to that story. So apparently it was an invasion. And yes, people, this story is like 20 years old and we're all just reading it for the first time, so. Yeah, yeah. 150 <laughs> issues, by the way. So all of yeah. this that we're talking about, this is just barely scratching the surface. Yeah, this is only the first five. First issues five issues. All this happened. <laughs> like, so imagine the rest of the series. Technically, bro, like, we're not even through volume one. Like, <laughs> yeah, technically, yeah, yeah. But like, Jack ends up winning that lottery that Prince Charming puts on. Yeah, his so one, one scrap of luck. He wins, and he that, still and that, loses because, because in order he has to, to pay give off it all his back. legal fees, he has to sell it back. You know the funny half thing? the price. <laughs> the funny thing about that, oh my gosh, the fact that Jack, he was feeling himself hard, bro. He was like, yeah, peasant. Right. <laughs> like, oh, Prince, it's Prince Jack to you now. It's Prince at, at Jack. Least he got, at least he got his one night to self-indulge, though. Yes. He did get his one night as a royal. Oh, I mean, bro. how many people could say they were royalty for a day? Right. Even if they did pay for it. <laughs> I mean, isn't that how, like, what's his name that used to be married to one of the Kardashians? He bought, like, his lordship. Are you talking about Lamar Odom? No. Uh, it was the I was going to say, he was an NBA player. He didn't need to. No, she was with some Duke or something, wasn't she? It was the, I don't it know. Was I don't the... keep up with that shit. I don't. I just know Lamar Odom because I'm a ba- huge basketball fan. <laughs> I just know it was it was the white guy. I don't know. What was I his didn't name? know that. I didn't know they went for those. I didn't. I mean, it didn't last. <laughs> we might have to edit that out. But it's <laughs> oh no, we're keeping that in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. It was. He he became like a lord or a duke or something. Uh, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> oh, I, man. I don't, I don't know, but still, hey, <laughs> but Jack, you can put Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk in that category now. You can, yeah. Because I don't like yeah. where these characters are public domain. It, like, does it does this count as part of their stories? I mean, uh, because they they acted like all their old stories ha- did happen, so technically yeah. all that is canon in this story. So I would assume. If we're going based off of the universe that they're in, then yeah, this is all, you know, canon to everybody's fairy tale stories. It's just happened hundreds and hundreds of years later after the ones that were written it down. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait to tell these stories to my future kids and be like, yeah, after Jack came down to confuse the hell out of them. They go to school <laughs> talking about telling people about Jack of the Beanstalk and be like, What the 
hell was he talking about? Like, like, yeah, I remember well, that time he was dating Rose Red. They had to fake her death because he lost all his money in the dot com investment. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what? Here be- in about twenty years, that might be the way they rewrite it. So <laughs> exactly. The little little hillbillies are gonna be like they're gonna be like, well my dad said that Jack was with Rose Red and la 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 oh man and most people and never so, heard of Snow Rose White Red was a deputy and Prince Charming ran a lottery which from the part of the country I'm from that isn't that far off no uh, that's really not <laughs> it's really not but and Pinocchio wanted to get laid. <laughs> Badly, he was upset, yo. Like he was so mad. <laughs> Pinocchio, oh my! I God. really that hope he runs in thing. to the good fairy sometime soon because, and you bro, know what? that's just wrong. Uh, how she did? On, whoever that was on the bench next to him, I hope he runs back into her after that, bro. <laughs> I think that was Cinderella that was talking to him. Good for Pinocchio. <laughs> Oh man! Bring bring that joint full circle, Bill Willingham. Hey, listen. I don't know if y'all know this. <laughs> Fables came back for another twelve issues. Yeah, it's I heard that. being published from DC Black Label, I think, or it might just be that, DC. Yeah. If that didn't that. happen in the first hundred and fifty issues, Bill Willingham, if you see this, let Pinocchio age up and run into Cinderella again. Make it happen. <laughs> And be like, hey, what's up? Make him find the fairy. Well, maybe that even happens. We haven't read all of this yet, so. Pinocchio, all we know I'm is what happens it. in the first I'm five issues. It. I just know Pinocchio was like, it's on sight when he catch that fairy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he was so upset. <laughs> that was so funny, bro. <laughs> but can we go back to like why the like, dude, these covers? Take like the most minute scene out of the book and make it into the cover. Yeah. Well, that's like yeah. the cover for issue one is Bigby's human form climbing out of the wolf skin. Yeah. With Snow White behind, standing behind him, eating an apple. Yeah. The apple. And then the pig is in the tree. Right. Like the first cover is just so random, you don't even know what you're looking at. The second oh, cover like that is cover a on one-page too. scene. Now that in the is next- vertigo. That is Vertigo right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. But issue two's cover is Cinderella and Bluebeard fencing. That was literally half a panel or like half a page. And then you go to issue three. The cover of yeah. that is the granny pouring tea. She was literally in two frames. Cover number four was it looks like it's Beauty and the Beast in their dress and tux. Looks like they were it. shown in one scene in one panel of that book. Although that kind of looks like Rose, slightly, but I believe it's supposed like to be. I think it is supposed to be Beauty and the Beast, but Beauty, it the only stop. cover oh, yeah, of the first is five Beauty. issues that makes any sense as far as like overall grand plan of the book is issue five. Issue five. five. With, with, uh, because Rose it's Rose Red taking her black wig off. <laughs> yep. Or trying to keep it on. Yeah. You can't really tell what she's doing in that one. But I'm sorry. Rose definitely do drugs, bro. Like, Look how zoned out she looks. 100%. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> well, it does say, like they say multiple times, that she likes to party with Mondays. So. Yep. No, yeah, she oh, definitely. She's definitely. She likes. She likes us normies. Another thing, I'm. I'm kind of mad at this story because it made me do something that I never do, and that's uh, shipping. Shipping two characters together, I never do that. <laughs> but uh, I really want to see Bigby and Snow White. You know, make this a thing. I he he did I, make a move. He, he was just. He did it in a kind of half-ass roundabout way. He did. Did it with his tail with his tail between his legs. Right, like, come on, bro. It's Snow White. If you're gonna make a move, you're gonna have to make a move, move. Like, <laughs> she, she, she used the Prince Charming. Just no cover the game. Right. She she got no saved by Prince Charming and then got eternal youth. Like, <laughs> you got to step your game up from tricking her into a dance, saying it's for work. <laughs> Heck yeah. Oh man. 
And that's the fact he had to explain that to her on the last page. He was like, "You really, you really don't get it." I, I, I said, right, like that one was obvious. It's like, okay, this doesn't have anything to do with anything. They're not talking about anything. Yeah, that has to no, do with she, the case. And she or, was just like, like, she was just like, "What?" And then she was like, "Oh no!" Nah. Like, she shut him down too. Yeah, she he's did. gonna have an uphill battle ahead of him. Yeah. Well, she straight said, "I mean it. Back off." Like. <laughs> like He's like, okay, okay, I get That's it. That's why I said, like, Snow White definitely gives me, like, district attorney vibes from NYPD Blue because the district attorney in that show is very much like that, like, very don't fuck with me kind of lady, you know, like, very stern, professional, pantsuits, the whole nine yards. She reminded me a lot of um, Karen Page from the Netflix Daredevil series. Okay, yeah. Where, especially where, like, I could see Snow White going up to somebody like Bluebeard, or in Karen's case, Wilson Fisk, and being like, yeah, the only reason I stopped shooting your boy was because the clip ran out. Right, yeah, 100%. <laughs> I mean, she came with the one cut sword to she did. Try, and, try and save Bigby. She thought he was in trouble, so she came down there with that sword. I forget what story that's from, but it, it kills with one cut, like literally a paper cut can kill you with that sword she was just she was slinging that thing over her shoulder just too. leaning it over oh, her yeah. shoulder right next like to her neck nothing. like like it wasn't none She's like, like what yeah, if that what if the power of that sword like goes as far as if it cuts a hair on you it kills you you know, like she they they're not very specific at how serious that power of that sword goes that's I could very well see Snow White in this being that kind of being that kind of character that's like, yeah, I ain't afraid to die. Bring it on. Oh, oh yeah, I mean, she was definitely down for the whole cause. Like she was yeah. not <laughs> scared at any point during the whole thing. I'm pretty sure, like Snow White and uh, Bigby, they're gonna be like the two main characters we follow throughout this whole entire like saga. Yeah, Bigby, Bigby is on the co- he is on the cover of issue six. Big B is? Yeah. Hopefully Big B, I feel Big like, B. is going to be that character that we follow through the whole series. Because, yeah. like... Which, Longbox, you could correct me on this, because I haven't, I haven't read this other series that Volume 1 compares it to yet. I know, but... It's like, it says, Fables is an excellent series in the tradition of Sandman. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Sandman kind of goes, jumps around to different places, but Dream is that one character that you follow throughout. Uh... Yeah, basically. I feel like Bigby's gonna be like that. Bigby's gonna be that one character that we follow throughout all of the. Because I think one of the volumes coming up is Animal Farm, which I think is going to be that farm that farm that, that they, they go to. to in this issue or yeah. in this volume. And so whether Snow's there or not, I don't know. But I do think Bigby's gonna be that character that we just are constantly. Farm. Right, and the animal farm, it seems like it's the place where they send all, like, the animalistic characters that can't change their forms, but they can talk yeah. and they're sentient. Yeah. Oh, so, also, But the way they talk about it also, it just seems like it's a prison of some kind, too, so I don't really know what it is yet. They make it, they make it sound like that farm that your parents tell you all your old pets went to as a kid. Right, but, but they use it as a threat with Jack and Bluebeard, like, we'll just send you both up to the farm. Hundred yeah, years like, of hard they, labor, like whoa, what? Like, <laughs> and it's like what they do up there. Man. But uh, one thing I would say, and of course, I, I wouldn't be long box entertainment if I didn't say my controversial statement each episode. But, oh, here uh, we go. Since you uh, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me let me make mark a clip here. Okay. You know, you mark <laughs> Honestly, since you mentioned Sandman. Hillbilly, after reading this, I feel like I was more engaged reading this than I ever was Sandman. I think Fables is better than Sandman. See, that's... I I would be... Like I said, I haven't read Sandman, but I know enough about it from friends that have read it and from research that I've done. I already know it. I know it's not for me. It's not my vibe, it's not my style, it's yeah. not the type of story that I pursue. This isn't really either, but it's more so. And so I can I can already say it's like, yeah, I would read more fables before I'd ever really consider touching Sandman. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's that's how I felt because I've only read the first sixteen issues of Sandman, and I felt like I had to make myself read those. You know what I'm saying? But with Fables, it was just natural. Like I wanted to. Read hey, everything it. flowed well. The pacing was good. Yeah, it wasn't comments. too fast. It wasn't too now. slow. Like you know, even in issue one, a lot of issue ones with any series, it's either a whole lot of information all at once, or it tells you nothing. Welcome to Smoke Popcorn Rice. Like to discuss. Want to know some more fun facts? Isn't it awesome to see some of your favorite content creators and favorite people, honestly, if you follow here on this tab, be a part of this amazing community called the Nerd Initiative? Tells you nothing. True. And it's just a setup thing. This issue one actually explained what it needed to without giving you the whole plot right away. Yeah, true. At another, it set another up fairy the story. Tale. That's what they're supposed to do. <laughs> another fairy tale, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. This one was just right. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Great analogy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it wasn't like again because to like piggyback on the statement of you know comics doing a little too much or there there's too much like expedition. I love that this story wasn't too wordy. You know what I'm saying? Like, it let the art do what it needed to do. And it just used the dialogue it needed to use. It didn't have a lot of filler conversations. It wasn't a lot of empty panels and screen and Mm -hmm. just art for no reason. Yeah. I will say that where I think this story used that to its advantage was the fact that it was a murder mystery and the fact that it was a detective story. In detective stories, typically, you get a lot of narration. You get a lot of diner scenes. You get a lot of just interrogation. A lot of characters talking to each other and trying to work out stuff. And it's like, talking heads, okay, that yeah. stuff is interesting, but it's a lot easier to watch that happen than read it happen. Yeah, that is fair. That is fair. I'll give you that. I like cop shows because, you know, you see the real-time interaction back and forth. So that's cool. But when I have to read... 10 pages of two guys sitting across from each other talking it gets really monotonous really quickly what well, <laughs> and that was probably that was probably my biggest thing with like issue five issue five where it was almost entirely exposition heavy mm-hmm. I, I thought it served the story well but it was like none of these issues were difficult to get through at all but comparing mm-hmm. them one to another issue five was the hardest to get through for me Oh, I agree. Because I agree. it was the wordiest of the five, for sure. It was sure. the wordiest one, yeah. But I think that was just because they were trying to wrap that story up in a nice, neat little bow so they could start the next story arc. Because I'm not sure what the whole process was when this thing was coming out originally. Because for all I know, they only had it slated for five issues at first. And you know what? That's kind of how it reads. It reads like a mini Yeah, it reads like it was a beginning to end storyline. And then at the very end, it says the, like, it had the question mark for the end or continues or whatever. That, like, they weren't mark. sure yeah. if they were going to yeah. get a re- renewal or not on it. Which would kind of make sense yeah. because. Well, yeah. no, it was. I guess it was a monthly series when it came out. Uh, so this is the end for now. For now, yeah. Yeah, so maybe they were like originally. I don't know. You never know how stuff like that goes behind the scenes. There's probably a thousand different stories, but I don't know. Vertigo, from what I've read and from what I've seen, did a lot of those like arc heavy books where you could pretty much read each arc as like a standalone. Where it would mm-hmm, help yeah. if you read them in order, but you could read an arc, put it aside for like six months to a year, and then pick up the next arc and be perfectly fine. Right. Yeah. yeah. At least like in my limited, albeit Vertigo experience. Right. I mean, that's no, it definitely of, does seem like a pattern with them for sure. I agree. That's how a lot of the Hellblazer comics are like that. Yeah. Because honestly, like, John Constantine, he doesn't go through, like, too much character development, you know? I mean, how much character development can you really (laughs) give the man? Yeah, true that. (laughs) But... I mean, mean, he's got one shtick, you know? (laughs) There there are some moments where they do give us a character, like, the whole thing, like, with his daughter and all that stuff. But for the most part... Yeah, but you can only go over that and rehash that so many times, you know? I mean... 
That is you can true. only milk the sympathy turnip for so long until there's nothing left. <laughs> right. But yeah, guys, I feel so since this is actually our first episode uh, reviewing and not really reviewing, we're just like talking about comic. Uh, what do y'all? Yeah, it was like the most disorganized book club session ever. Yes, it was. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel so sorry for our viewers. They are probably like all over the place. <laughs> but uh we'll we'll be leaving. I'll I'll make sure to edit in some panels and some pages from these issues so at least you guys know yeah. what we're talking about a little bit. <laughs> because yes. this is definitely the most back and forth yeah. and all over the place podcast episode we've done so far. Yeah. Although with this being very spoiler heavy, I would hope that like if you had a desire to read this story that you would have read it already and can kind of relate to a lot of this discussion with us yeah if you don't have a desire to read it i don't know why you would have watched this episode yeah i'm not sure why you would have clicked on it <laughs> yeah. but we're grateful either way uh <laughs> right 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 I don't, I, just, I don't see i don't see a whole lot of people making it past the uh, long boxes sandman comment comments i can see the comic comments now with the timestamp. be like burn your entire collection yeah they, they 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 clicked off somebody's probably gonna say i don't read i've never read a comic hey but, he managed um, to skirt by with that henry cavill comment from the last episode so hey, hey but that spawn comment that's what got him but uh just spawn comment I saw more people upset about the Spawn comment than I did the Henry Cavill comment. But just so people know, I, I read Sandman. I read it. Okay. Because, yeah, you, I even had to do a, re a response video to that one guy because he was like, tell me you've never read a comic without telling me you've never read a comic because, you know, me hilarious. and Longbox were saying, like, Spawn's okay, but the writing's not that great and it kind of is carried by the artwork. That that was hilarious. and that that dude apparently took that to mean that me and Longbox don't read comic books. I'm like, you're Which, dude, you're especially Longbox. You're talking to the wrong dude if you're trying to say he doesn't read books. <laughs> Which kind of brings up an interesting discussion, though, in and of itself, because like I guarantee you, the guy saying that and other people that think that way that think Spawn is like this high form of comic storytelling grew up reading Spawn as it was coming out. So from, yeah. like, and it's it's really cool looking at. And at the time, like, I, I'll give it credit. Yeah. At the time, it was some of the best storytelling going on at the time. Yeah, which when it comes to stuff like fables, again, it brings up a really interesting conversation of like what stories actually age well and what stories are funded by nostalgia. Right. Yeah. True. Not that. Ooh, that could be a whole another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you just gave us an idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do i do think about that stuff a lot because i know like when i was first getting into comics i thought flashpoint was like the pinnacle of comic book storytelling and i go back and look at it and i'm like it was fun like <laughs> jeff right. johns knew what he was doing but he's done better stuff <laughs> right well and that's yeah. like people how do i want to say this <laughs> People act like the writers that are legends now have always been as good as they are now. Nah. True. No. I mean, even if you go back and look at Neil Gaiman's early, early stuff, it's not that good. Yeah. Nobody's first few things are going to be good. I don't care who you are. I don't care what school you went to. That's Nobody's going to hit a home run their very first try unless you get very lucky. That's the thing, yeah. If you look at any kind of art form, most artists peak somewhere, and even athletes, in the middle of their career. Mm -hmm. They don't do that great at the beginning, and they kind of fizzle out towards the end. If you look, that's at when they're given a lot of more, yeah. a lot of new control over what they're doing. That's when they're allowed exactly. to get all their creative juices out that they've been trying to get out for the last ten years, twenty years, whatever it has been. Now they've been waiting to do it, and then they do it all in like five years. Exactly. And they exactly. put everything out all at once, and then after that, they're just trying to recreate what they came out with. That's like even the best like musicians so of all time. You're, like you Michael just Jackson, described, you Willard just described Bad. Jeff Johns. Yeah, Jeff Johns. Like I said, he had probably a good five to eight years where he was doing amazing stuff, and then ever since then, it's it's not been bad. 
Oh, it hasn't been as good. good. He had a good like fifteen year prime, honestly, because it like if you like Jeff Jeff Johns is like that rookie phenom. Like he's he's yeah. an example of that rookie phenom coming in with stuff like JSA going into Flash, Green Lantern, Justice League, Aquaman, and then after the new fifty two, he just kind of. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, his, his Rebirth stuff was good. Because he did a lot of stuff, like, right after New 52 ended. Yeah. He did some of his best stuff right after New 52 ended, in my opinion. Yeah, but as long as then, we don't talk it's about been kinda, Jokers, yeah, I'm fine. I wasn't going to mention that. <laughs> you, know, man, oh, uh, you already and, know how I feel about Joker and Batman stories in general right now, so. That and Doomsday Clock. Ooh, let's see how many people are pissed off by saying that. That's, yeah, I know a lot of people love Doomsday Clock. I haven't gotten around to it yet because, man, I'm about to. I'm about it's to one lose, of those books. I'm like, yes, it's good, movie. but it's also one of those books that's so highly praised that you overhype if you've never read it. I just I didn't think Watchmen was that good when I read it. He'll be like, I want to hug you, bro. I thought I thought Watchmen. Come here. Come here. Uh, thank you. All right, man. All right. <laughs> like, thank I you. thought it was good. I thought Watchmen was good. Watchmen is good, but it's not as good as people tout it to be. And that's the thing. I'm not knocking it as a literary work. Right. I'm, I'm not knocking it as a critique on the superhero and comic book, like on the superhero genre, which is what it is. Like, yep. Watchmen is a good book. But I've read comics that I've thought were better. I thought Grant Morrison's Animal Man was a better critique on the superhero genre. Yeah. Than Watchmen. I'll agree with that. And that's like just, I said, that's Watchmen is just one of those series that once it got big, now it's overhyped. Uh, it was now one of the people first. tout it as one of the greatest things that ever happened to comic books. And I'm my like, thing, my thing about Watchmen, like okay, it's probably one of the higher selling stories out there. But how many people go back and reread Watchmen? It's I probably dense, will. Bro. Just it, the it's first dense. time I read it, it was for a class. like that's a I'm dense run, especially that. if you get the full blown like total collected edition of everything. Like that's not a weekend read, man. You get those prose pages in there. I skipped those the first time I read it. Right, Watchmen is thick, bro. I, my it's thing lot, is, man. I don't, I don't know why people think it's so, like, the characters in Watchmen suck, bro. I dig, and this is gonna be like, I, I dig <laughs> Warshack. I dig they're terrible people. I dig Night Owl to a degree. Like, Doctor, I'll say it's sort of like the Man boys, Man like the boys. All those characters are horrible, freaking people. Yeah. No, and like the entire I'm... character roster of the boys are horrible individuals, like trash humans. <laughs> if you even just talk about Alan Moore, the best Alan Moore work that I've read to date. Yeah. The Swamp Thing. Swamp I still thing. need to read that run. Yeah. I need to finish actually, it. I need to finish actually, it. But... <laughs> the best but I, Alan Moore I, yeah. is Swamp Thing. I think that's Alan Moore at his top was Swamp That in uh, Miracle Man. I still need to read Miracle Man. I've heard that is so good. I've read a little bit of it. I haven't finished Best it. I need to go Alan get another Moore. copy of it. Best Alan Moore ever. Yes. But yeah, I guess we kind of. I guess we kind of say all that to say, like, Fables is one of those books that so far has lived up to the hype. So far, five issues so in, far, I can see why up. people are touting this so far. Yeah. And that's rare. So a lot of times I'll read something older that people are like, oh, this is amazing stuff. And you read it and it's like, okay, this probably was amazing back in like 85. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like this probably was amazing stuff back then. Now it's like, it's dated. Like, not yeah, everything yeah. holds up. This is good. This is good, though. Yeah, and it's, I, I'm, I, I've heard, like, I listened to. Like I went on this fables like YouTube rabbit hole last night just to see what other people were saying about the series and everything like that because I know this is one of those books that like fans of the series 
if you're doing like a 10 minute video, obviously we're doing a whole podcast, so we can't not spoil it. They tend to keep it spoiler free. I saw this dude ranking like his top 10 story arcs in Fables. This was number 10. Oh, wow. Okay. So, if what he's saying is true and what everybody else that I heard say on that It's just going to get way true, better. We're in for a treat. That's what's up. Good and deal. honestly, yeah, I, I'm going to be picking up these volumes as quickly as my wallet allows me to. I, I, well, if your wallet does not allow and you can't find them, the they're all on the DC app. All right, cool, cool. Oh, and that's we're where I found to, them and read them today. <laughs> I hope you know we're gonna have to do a book club. <laughs> if we're all, do, oh, if we're at this all point, be for reading, sure. If we're all gonna be reading fables, I mean, I doubt. Like, we'll have to start doing it on TikTok too, so other people can. can join in. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I would say too, like we should. We we should all we should all like try to reunite here again once we're all either to like like the halfway point maybe and then again when we finish the series so it's like first arc halfway point overall oh yeah I like that I like that I like that because the halfway point would be right at seventy five issues and if I'm not mistaken that would take us to volume between like volume nine and volume eleven. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I think it's like 20, 22 volumes and all, something like that. 22, 22 or 23. volumes, but I think the 22nd volume might just be issue 150, according to the cover. Oh. oh it might be one of those giant size deals where it's like yeah. 64 pages or something crazy. Because oh, I, okay. I, actually, that was another one, and I'll pick, I'll pick that one up for you too, Longbox, if I go back. Okay. They had a volume 22. Oh, okay, bet, bet, And bet. now that we know we enjoy the series and we want to read past Volume 7, I feel like that'd be a safe pickup. But there's just this big 150 on the cover. Like, it's smack dab in the middle. Oh, oh wow. Okay. I guess. Ah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man, but I'm, I'm excited. I, I know <laughs> y'all are it. too, but I'm, I'm excited. Oh, yeah. and I, For sure. And now since I'm thinking about it, when we when we actually do finish the the story, I want to have Jess on the show too because I think she read the whole series already. So she's gonna it's gonna be compared from somebody that has read the whole series versus three newbies that, that are just now reading it. Just yeah. now read it, yeah. So I think that'd be fun. That, so that Jess, actually, yeah, that could be really cool. So if Jess is watching. Which I'm sure she is. Yeah, be on the lookout with that. Finish the series in two years. In two years, <laughs> we'll see you. No, we're gonna have her on for a Wonder Woman episode soon. Oh, that's hopefully. sick. Yeah, we still got to do that oh, soon too. I'm definitely yeah. going to catch up. But um, we are about out of time, guys. So if you guys are still listening, you stuck around for this entire episode of Madness. Thank you very, very much. My name is Jeremy, once again, a.k.a. JJ's Comic Stuff on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, pretty much anywhere you can find me. Um, Michael is Longbox underscore Entertainment everywhere you can find him. And Hillbilly Comics is Hillbilly Comics everywhere you can find him. Be sure to look up Crossover Comics Podcast on YouTube, Spotify, soon to be Apple Podcasts, according to Cody Collects. Um, also, make sure you check out Color Break, uh, A Rock Public Radio, Amalgam Talks, Columbus Underground Comics, Nerd Initiative. Am I missing anything, guys? Uh, I think you hit it all. Uh, just uh, support your local comic shops if you can. Always. Facts. If not, don't steal it, try to buy it. <laughs> or get a streaming service. Get a streaming service. Get an app. Get yeah. something. There's there's tons of ways to read this stuff for cheap. But anyway, guys, as always, be safe, be kind, and take it easy.